Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to business. Mining firm Anglo Gold Ashanti is set to formally reopen its Obwasi mine today. This good news comes after the mine was shut down four year, for four years in 2014 due to some challenges with the concession and also finding capital to inject into the company. Senior Sustainability Manager Nana Bekwiampofo has been speaking with Prince Apia ahead of the opening. Operational side, what, what would happen is that we are getting into what we call mechanized mining, as we've always said, and it's going to be contract mining. It's a contractor that is going to do the mining and the owner will be doing the supervision as we've communicated in our engagement with our stakeholders. Uh, previously, what we used to have uh, is a mine that had a lot of employees. We've changed from that stage into a new stage where we're going to have mechanized farming, uh, mechanized uh, mining with very few highly skilled employees. That is what we're going to get into. When it comes to the community from where I sit, I must say that a couple of things uh, have changed. We've come up with a few things. One of the major things we've done is the development of the local employment procedure where we are going to ensure that all unskilled and semi-skilled labor is going to be restricted to the concession. And then we are going to make concerted efforts to make sure that we are able to get a lot more locals into areas of work. When it comes to local procurement, we are coming up with what we call enterprise development, where local contractors would be given a lot of training, their capacity would be built so they can attract a lot of high-end projects and contracts. That is going to happen. If you take our community trust fund, our trust fund, uh, based on the previous stability agreement, we used to give communities 1% of profit after tax at the end of each year. In the new agreement, it is uh, $2 per each ounce of gold produced. So whether the mine makes profit or not, we're still going to put something in the community trust fund to churn out a couple of development projects for the communities. So we've come a long way. We've, uh, we all know what happened to the Obuasi community. The Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture has piloted its policy on the agriculture for food and jobs at the James Camp Prison's fish farm. About 1,000 sacks of fish feed were donated to the prison's fish farm and 3,000 fingerlings introduced to the fish pond. Charles Aiti has more. The choice for James Camp Prison's fish farm was to complement government's efforts to introduce fish farming as a vocation for the 300 inmates at the facility. In all, 150 sacks of fish feed were donated to the farm and 3,000 fingerlings introduced to the fish pond. Sector Minister Elizabeth Afolukwe explained the motive behind this move. Today we are starting with the James Camp Prison, okay. um, other institutions like the police service. We are liaising with a lot of institutions to uh, produce aquaculture within those institutions. And also as part of the Aquaculture for Food and Jobs program, we are uh, setting up uh, the youth. It's really a youth-oriented program. Okay. We, are, we want to set some youth up in aquaculture uh, production. We want to start some farms for these youth. In terms of the investment capital, the government is injecting to this initiative. We are injecting over 10 million Ghana cities. This program follows growing concerns over Ghana's depleting fish stock. Currently, Ghana consumes over 950,000 metric tons of fish annually, currently importing over 60% of its fish, and in 2016 imported $135 million worth of fish because of the reduction in the country's fish stock. And in other news, the Volta River Authority, VRA, has warned that it will not subsidize the price of power to consumers through the Electricity Company of Ghana, ECG. This is in the wake of the higher tariffs projected for the Sankofa gas, which is expected to come on stream in March this year. According to the VRA, any attempt to subsidize will be at a huge loss to the company. Dr. Isaac Doku is director for the commercial department of VRA. Uh, you can't... If you buy as X and you generate 
you got to sell it at Y. You can't, I will say, subsidize. So that, that will not be sustainable. And I believe that that is why we are where we are in the industry today, because we've tried to subsidize uh, through various means. And so the true cost is not being passed down to I mean, the consumer. It may be difficult in the, in the initial instance, but I think that if we allow market forces to actually play out, it will, it will even out itself. Um, we've been tinkering with prices here and there, and at times we end up distorting the, the real market. So I'll, I'll say now there's no way VR can cushion the price for a, anyone. I mean, if we're going to negotiate, we're going in to negotiate because we're thinking about at what price can we sell the electricity. And therefore, we need to negotiate and negotiate hard because then our electricity prices can be competitive and we can be able to sell it on. And that's all in business for now. Sports is next.